Hello, good evening everybody and welcome, a big, big welcome to another edition of the Poetry of Painting. So my guest this week is the lovely Ros Ottery with some more of her wonderful poetry. So let me just bring her onto the screen and don't forget everyone to um, add some comments, add some likes and loves and ask questions. Hi Ros, how are you? I'm fine, thank you Fiona. As Good. long as the technology keeps going, we'll be fine. <laughs> we all keep our fingers severely crossed. Absolutely. Yes, it's a, it's a bit touch and go sometimes, isn't it? But never mind. Let's let's go for it and and do what we can. So um yeah, so how how's everything going? Because unfortunately you couldn't join us because of the car that time. It, it's right. still being resolved, I guess. It is. A lot of it is still being resolved, but uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I've got transport now. I've, I've, I've got um, a car from the government, so I'm actually, I'm actually fine. It's, Good. it's just, you know, it's, life is so busy that mm. even an event like that goes, uh, like it's almost, it feels like it was months ago now to me. Yes. Um, yes. But it, it's it, life. I, I, I really have my feet just to do does not touch the ground. I, we're, we're, we're busy, 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 which I think a lot of people are at the moment, that I, time of year. Absolutely, so many people are busy, um, myself included, but yes. Uh, oh, Chris is with us. Hi, Fiona, lovely to be with you again. Thank you, Chris, lovely to have you with us. Thank you. And uh, thank you to everybody else who's watching, either on live or on replay. So, Roz, uh, this week you have another of your wonderful poems for us. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry if I have to keep clearing my throat, it's just the tail end of a cough. Um, about my painting called Dappled Path, which is in the image behind me, and I will put it on the screen in a moment when you're ready to read your poem. Um, so it's another oil painting of mine, which is actually about 60 by 30, so it's about two foot by one foot um, in size in oils. Mm -hmm. And again, as normal for me, or my preferred way of working anyway, painted with knives. So um, it, Ros doesn't know anything about this painting from me as yet for writing her poetry, but I can tell Ros now it's, it's actually based on a local park. It's like a, a local, it's like a country park, you know, um, you know, wooded areas, lakes and things. And it's just such a wonderful place. It's quiet it's peaceful you've got the birds singing you've got the trees it, to me it's just the sort of place to go to to relax to chill out to to ground yourself you know the trees there are just uh, although the ones in the painting are, are reasonably slim but there's some that's just so old and so you know they're just so present and grounded and solid and you know there's no hurrying, there's no rush, there's no waste of the you know, so um, that, that's where I was coming from with the painting. It would be interesting to see what you made of it, Roz, so if you're ready, I'll put the image a bit larger yeah. on screen for people. Well, as is my way, I like to, um, I, I like to sort of give a little overview of some of the things that why I wrote it in the way I did, but uh, I had some quite sad news last week um a very old school friend of mine who i knew from infant school right through um had passed away and i didn't know because you know we we, we keep in touch occasionally but not all the time and mm -hmm. essentially um uh, somebody had written to me and said did you know that this lady had died and so i i had quite a lot of sadness about that lots and lots of years and i really rather wished that I had been able to speak with her before she passed away, but it wasn't to be. And at the same time, I was writing this poem. So I, 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 I lost a lot of energy for writing poetry that week because I was in a, a grief process. And then I decided one evening that, you know, to, to just try and, and do this and, and get lost in the painting. Um, and the painting pulled me in. And, so I talk in this poem of being a prisoner and what I mean is of the grief process and those things. There's an element of sadness in it. It's not a sad poem, but it is, it's about the, the, the picture finally 
giving a bit of respite because when you actually get lost in nature and you see a painting or or or, or even a place like this i i just imagined i was there and that the path was pulling me forward urging me to move on from where i was in the shadows into the sun so although those words aren't mentioned you'll see as the poem goes along what, how how that panned out so that's why it's written in the way it is uh, it is a rhyming poem i don't rhyme everything but this just naturally lent to rhyme so that's what i did so this is the poem This winding way urges me the journey's start. As it whispers, take the step, become a part. With such a day as quiet bliss, nature gifts a prisoner this. Exploration calls to free my captured heart. So with hazy skies of cobalt blue ahead, with patchwork colours upon the path to tread, Trees with delicate delight make random patterns against the light, while dappled, dappled sunlight carpets where my feet are led. Oh, finest filigree of lazy basking leaf, we've patterns now in joys of depth and grief. For the enticement of this place is earthly rich in nature's grace, and has led my heart to find a space of peace. That is beautiful, Rose. It really is. And and I think that just emphasizes what I was saying about going to a place like this or losing yourself in a painting like this, that it it does take you somewhere and you can sort of shed off a lot of those cares and worries and concerns yeah. and and hopefully to some extent the grief. I know it's not quite as easy as that, you know, it's not it's not just oh, well it again. did pull me in have to I, I started off started off not wanting necessarily to actually do it at that moment thinking you know no my mood isn't right or whatever but actually what happened was that as i looked at the poem and i allowed uh, the, the, the painting and i allowed the poem to emerge it just wrote itself so i didn't work hard on that poem it just wrote itself and and it it, it felt as if as i wrote it each verse did made me go a step higher and a step higher until I did honestly feel that having looked at the painting and allowed myself to imagine that scene and being in it, it just, it did, it, it, it really helped. It was lovely. Good, excellent. Well, Chris said, beautiful and moving poem, some great images created. Absolutely, very well put, Chris, thank you. Yeah, it just, just so wonderful, not, you know a really long poem but it, it said everything in in those verses you know it's yeah. just just absolutely stunning roles another total success thank, thank you, you very much <laughs> well yeah. certainly the painting is Fiona. I'm, I, I, I'm very very impressed with the painting I, lo I love the colors you know i wish that it could have been a more descriptive poem because this i think this painting is just rich in in all of the light and the dark and the shade and the way that everything you know there's some there's some more solid images and then there's the more misty ones in the background there could have been if this had been a descriptive poem if my mood hadn't been in the way it was there, mm -hmm. there's a lot you could say i'm pretty certain i could probably write another one which is very different oh. to that which well, was that would be interesting would be very descriptive yeah yes that would be really interesting to hear another version yeah in a, yeah, on a absolutely. totally different way that would be great yeah yeah i, but, I but, honestly think that yeah. mood and the way that you are definitely dictates some of the way mm. that writing happens and it must do with painting as well even though you have a scene yes. in front of you the way that you're painting must but must be affected mm. by your mood as, as it must with most artistry things i think absolutely yes you know the colors that you select will be different maybe depending on the mood not you know, because as artists, we don't necessarily paint everything exactly the same colour as we see it. Yes. You know, we or or as it is in nature, should we say, we may see it as a different colour because it just works better in the painting. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, thankfully, this was not your a descriptive poem because we wouldn't have had that beautiful poem that you did write for us. <laughs> so yeah, 
you know, got to look on the bright side of these things. But absolutely, um, and for me, it was quite a therapeutic poem. So <laughs> good, good. But I'm looking on the bright side now as well because I would love to hear a descriptive version yeah. of yeah. your poetry about the same painting. I'd that be yeah. great. I think that's a really good idea. I think that's the that's the next the next one that to come on. Perhaps we'll Excellent. do the same thing only uh, only only with a more descriptive piece because it is a very beautiful painting. I think this would would absolutely grace anybody's anybody's oh. hall or living room or wherever. It's Thank beautiful. You. It's really beautiful. <clears throat> Thank, you. Thank you. Well, as you will know, it's our hundredth show coming up very soon, and I say our show because. This show would not be going like it is now without all of the poets' help and involvement and, you know, giving of their creativity to, to make this show what it is. So our hundredth show is coming up very, very soon. I wonder if you might have time to do a descriptive poem about this painting for that show. Yeah, that would be lovely. Yeah, I'd love to do that, absolutely. And maybe um, either come on live or if it's not convenient, record it for me. Either way, I mean, having you on live would be brilliant. Um, but that would be great. And, you know, something else for the 100th show. You know, I want to make it full of different things, you know, and, yeah. you know, or try to get as many of, of you poets involved as I can. So that would be really yeah, good. Lovely. Yeah, I can't lovely. believe it's nearly the 100th show already. Today is the 97th show. So it's actually going to be four weeks till the hundredth show. That is incredible. Because, it has, yeah, it's gone so quickly. I know, I know. It, it's I don't know, you know, hundred shows already, and yet, wow. I thought, oh, I probably because do I can maybe remember the first time that I, 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 I contacted. Yeah, 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 and you've been a, a regular visitor ever since. Thank goodness. I think we I think we lost you a little bit there, Ros. Lot, a lot. <laughs> oh, I'm only hearing a little bit of what you said then, Ros. I've lost your sound. I don't know whether you oh. lost you. I, I can still hear you at the moment. Oh, we just love technology, don't we? <laughs> I know. I know. It's so. strange, really, because uh, I, I guess that I thought that it probably. Be... No, I'm. I've. Uh, I'm only picking up a little bit of you, Ros. Again, unfortunately. Can, can you hear me now? Uh, I I heard hear me now. Hear me is this? <laughs> I can I can hear you Is again now. No, I can hear you again now. Good. Let's <laughs> let's move forward quickly while we can hear you. So uh, it's glitching, I think, Fiona. It is, yes. But the main thing is okay. we heard we heard well, your I poetry. Think, uh, I'm, it's getting a bit stronger now, so perhaps it's coming back. Hmm. And, Fingers uh, crossed. <laughs> so. Yeah. Do you want me to try? Should I try and uh, log back in? No, it doesn't. You seem to be. You seem to get a little bit of you, and then it goes again. Oh, good. Okay. It it goes, doesn't yeah. It? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what have you got? Anything happening on the? Us, but, but we manage. They do. Yeah. Have you got anything right. on the? Podcast? Log in on a different. Moment. Um, I, I think you said, "Have I got anything coming up?" Is that what mm. you said? Yes, yeah. on the poetry. Um, I've, um, I've, I've, I've got. Uh, yeah, I've got some. I've, uh, the only thing I've got coming up. I'm really busy, but mostly on other things. But at the moment, there is, um, there's, there's like um, a, 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 an arts council grant in the local area to do some poetry in schools, and a couple oh. of us are doing a few um, poetry things in school where we go in with some poetry that we think would be funny for the children sort of amusing poetry and then they 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 take that as inspiration and they go and write some and then we're, we'll do a performance of it so that will be fun i'm really looking forward so, to that 
Yes, that sounds really good fun. Yes. And what sort of age range will you be working well, with? The junior school. It would be it'll be up to year up to year six. Um just in in junior school not not the not the very young ones but the middling ones so yes and yeah. it's it's voluntary as well not everybody has to do it um, mm -hmm. but everybody will the whole school will be at the at the end performance so that will be good too and yeah. they're going to make costumes and they're going to do pictures and everything to complement the poems so it will be real fun that I'm sounds forward to it Yes, yeah, and encouraging their creativity as well. That's right. Well, of course, that's, that's what happened to me. I started writing poetry at seven years old because a head teacher of, of ours came in to take the lesson when a, a, um, a teacher was ill. And the head teacher came in to take the lesson and had nothing planned. So wrote, read us a poem and then asked us to write one. Well, I was hooked, line yeah. and center, straight away. I and and I and I was prolific from that moment. I just I've written poetry ever since. Wow. Well, so we so you could be inspiring a new Ross Ottery. Who knows? Maybe. Maybe. Indeed. I mean, what, to a certain extent, um, I think children uh, lend themselves to poetry. They, you know, they're they're quite descriptive in their language in some respects, but the most thing they've got is imagination. Yeah. So if a child tells you a story, it's very often slightly embellished. Well, that's to a certain extent you need that element mm. um, of poetry. So, so you know, I think that that will be quite interesting to to sort of get their creative juices flowing and and allow them to do and go wherever they want with it. It will be fun. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And I think at that age as well, they're not they they are aware enough and they've learned something about life but they haven't been sort of molded into shape where you know once That's they get right. to senior school they get tend to get sort of you know you have to follow this path and do this this way and and they haven't yeah, got, think, yet really I got to that so, stage it begins to stem creativity at the beginning of senior school because you have to comply i mean i think mm. they release that towards the end of senior school <clears throat> but in the beginning in you know in years seven and eight i think the they, they really are quite tight on what they expect from you. Um, my, um, as you know, we have adopted our great grandson and he lives with us and he is in year seven. And they did a piece which was essentially a, a creative writing piece. But the, the, the amount of rules there were to actually follow this, this piece was just, it put him off. You know, I, I wish they just allowed him just to, to create something well, that would have been fun. But as it was, mm. there were so many things to follow, what he was allowed to do, what the types of things he was allowed to say, everything, you know, it's just a shame. Really. That seems so, to be the, the direct opposite of creative writing, you know, creative know. writing, just let it, you know, come out and let it flow. As a That's right, to... yeah. yeah. Well, they, they wanted it, it had to be about, it had to be about um, a subject that, that, that was, to do with nature subjects, so it, 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 they, they wanted that it was it was combined with the sciences department, and they wanted mm. something that was like they wanted something for for instance about uh, rivers could be one thing, but you had to put something in the poem that said how rivers were um, the, the the type of scientific elements within the river, the the mm. type of you know, um, like there's some rivers um, uh, 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 based on soil that erodes quickly. So it had to have elements of that in it, and it just made it boring. It was, it, there was no, oh, in the wait. end, there was no, you're breaking up a bit again, Roz. Really, in it, it was more what to do with trying to read up on what. We're what losing you again a bit at the moment, Roz. I'm afraid. Meander. What type of rivers are straight, and all that sort of thing. Oh. 
So Steve, we're, we're just about hearing that, but you're breaking up a little bit again, Rose, right. I'm afraid. Okay, yeah. I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear me, Roz? Are we, are we glitching again? Yes, yes, we are again, I'm afraid, unfortunately. Yeah. So it, do, it just seems to be particularly bad I tonight. Never, I, Maybe I never know whether to try and uh, lock in, Fiona. No, you're, you're back again at the moment. It just seems to come in waves. But, oh. Yes, you're frozen now. No, yeah, I could hear you, but um, you're frozen. I, I think here and hope that it comes back <laughs> okay well in the meantime let's hope it comes back and i shall tell everybody that now, we have another see. oh okay well i was just going to tell everybody yeah. as well that we've got another bloom show coming up it's wet which weather. i'm sure you've heard me talk about before yeah i think so oh. <laughs> it's, it's very misty wet weather here and sometimes I we, yeah, we seem to have a quite a delay um, and, and talking about different subjects. At different <laughs> so, so, can you hear me now, Ros? I can. Can you hear okay, me? Good. Yes, I can hear you. Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Right. Well, we'll give it just a little bit longer, but it's it seems particularly bad this evening, sadly, but... Um, yeah so what were we saying goodness me i've lost the thread now <laughs> we're just, we were just saying how creativity can be stifled a little by uh by yeah. by too many rules really absolutely it will, it, it will be fun to do the school shows and see how that goes mm. yes yes i think you know it, i think it applies to any creative arts whether it's painting poetry music the more rules you put in place, the, it, the more it does stifle creativity. And, you know, if, if you're after something new and original, if you're trying to put it into a box, you're limiting how new and original that thing can be. Yes, you know, absolutely. Like using different materials. I mean, that, this is obviously how we've come to have so many different mediums in painting, how you've come to have so many different styles and formats of poetry, because people thought outside the box they did things that weren't the norm you know somebody uh, originally invented oil paints you know mixing pigment with oil as opposed to mixing it with egg yolk and yeah. which is a tempera painting um you know and pastels and acrylics and you know if people didn't venture outside of what everybody thinks is the norm we wouldn't have all this stuff we wouldn't have well over 50 different styles of poetry probably a lot more but you know i've, I've found at least 50 version you know different types and music all the different types of music in the world and you know i like some sort of music better than others but there is there's some genres that i think mm, that's not really me but i'll still find you know a couple of pieces of music in that style that i think oh, that one but as a whole, I might say I'm not as keen, but, you know, so I think it's how can how can we get them to maintain that freedom of creativity with children instead of shutting it down? Well, I, one of the problems is and, you know, it's, it's not worth getting too political here, but the truth is that with Ofsted lurking in the background, many of the teachers and schools are quite stifled themselves. There are specific things mm. they have to get done by the end of year seven. And the stats come in and, and unfortunately, if the school is rated poorly, then they don't get the, the, the parents wanting their children to go there. So they're absolutely mm. paranoid about that. And it's everything, everything is geared towards trying to, to learn and to, and to um, attempt to get them in that particular direction. So mm. I think what they tried to do is with the creative writing piece that uh, our great grandson was doing was they were trying to get them to um, do a creative thing, which is fun, but also learn a bit of 
natural science on the side. And yes. it, it really doesn't fit. It's trying to sort of put a square peg in a round hole, really. But mm -hmm. And I suppose if they've got that much to get achieved during year seven and got to get those results at the end, it's not even as though you can say, well, 80% of the time we'll be doing that very structured work and 20% can be much more free and creative because I guess they need all of that time to get to those end results, don't they then? I, I would imagine that it would depend mm. on how quickly the children themselves can and pick up things and learn and of course they're so diverse with that it's mm. impossible really <clears throat> i mean in honesty they don't do sats again until year eight so they've got year seven and eight to do them but they're, they're absolutely i mean they're on it all the time it's that when we get a piece of homework home it very often has a little note on it saying this is part of what's expected in the oh. SATS exam, so. We're starting to lose you a little bit again, Ros, so, um, yeah, so I think we've uh, lost you a little bit again there. Yes, it is. Uh, I'm a bit, a bit shocked, really, because, of course, when my, my children went through school, it was, it was it's very, very, very different. Roswe, I don't know if you can hear me, but you're very, very broken up again at the moment. Huge oh, I think we're losing Ros again at the moment. So, anyway, hopefully Ros might get back with us in just a moment. But in the meantime, I will just tell you that the... Um, when our bloom show it that happens it would be best if i don't speak okay <laughs> um so we'll be having four shows this year starting on friday the 28th okay. of april and we will then have so there's a show in the evening then two shows on the saturday the 29th and a show on the morning of sunday the 30th so i will i don't know i, I don't uh, we, we seem to have quite a delay on this at the moment. So, um, anyway, sorry about that, Roz. Um, technology is. Oh, you can't. Good. Okay. Technology is not being our friend tonight. So, I think if. Can you hear me at the moment? No, we've got, a, got quite a delay. I think we're going to have to wrap it up there, folks. Um, Hopefully, Ros will hear me if I say thank you so much, Ros, for being back on the show. At least we got to hear your wonderful poem, which was absolutely beautiful. And in spite of the technical difficulties, I've really enjoyed talking with you again. And one day we'll get a show where you just come on and we talk and there's no technical <laughs> hitches whatsoever. So <laughs> that would be marvellous. <laughs> it, would. it would be marvellous. Yeah, good. You can hear me again now. Well, I'm glad you heard that. Okay, so yeah. thank yeah, you I so did. much, Roz. And thank you, everybody, for watching. And sorry about the technical difficulties. Um, somewhat beyond our control, unfortunately. So anyway, take care, everybody. I will not be doing a show next week because of other events happening. But I'll be back the week after with another edition of the Poetry of Painting. So take care, everybody. Thanks again, and thank you very much, Roz. Take care, everybody. Thanks, Bye. 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 Bye.